Okay, so well, <clears throat> welcome back everybody. So I wanted to um, put out my first video regarding a uh, hiker that was found back in uh, July of 2018 in Florida in Collier County, um, sort of on the east or west side of Cypress Preserve National uh, Preserve in I'm going to say this wrong, Ochipee, Florida. And um, this is kind of a bizarre case because he is a John Doe, but at the same time, we know his trail name. So as hikers, we all know that that's pretty much on a long distance hike. That's what you're referred to. And um, he was referred to as denim, mostly harmless. And a lot of people refer to him as Bill Billamy, or Blimey, it's, it's hard to say, but um, after he was found, uh, the police got involved and of course they were able to track down other hikers. And so as far as they could piece together, he was, he started the Appalachian Trail in uh, 2017, somewhere in New York. Um, from bits and pieces, people think he might've been from Brooklyn, According to some hikers, he told people that he was in the tech industry and uh, he was on trail and he was working on a, a hiker app. But again, it's, it's hard to say because nobody knew his real name. And actually, as a through hiker, this is something that um, kind of concerned me too because last year I remember the guys that I was hiking with, I put together a care package for them because they were gonna be at another stop Anyway, when I was talking to the post office lady, I only knew their trail names and first names. And I was thinking, wow, what if we actually needed to, to tell somebody who they were? We wouldn't be able to because all we know is each other's first names and trail names. So it's something to think about like with your family or people that you feel comfortable with on trail, just a few people to know who you actually really are. Because in this case, it could have uh, solved the entire mystery. Um, so in any event, uh, a, a, two gentlemen hikers by the name of Nicholas Horton and Logan Bueller were hiking on July 23rd of 2018 in the Cypress Preserve. And around 8 p.m. they were coming down the trail and just kind of getting ready to finish up for the night. And uh, they sat down in a little picnic area and uh, they noticed a bright yellow tent off to the side. and. At first, they just kind of assumed that it was another hiker that had set up and was there. Um, I believe Nicholas got up and went to get some water and Logan was more curious. He went over and inspected it. And as he peered in through the mesh, what he first thought was you know, a gentleman sleeping uh, was this emaciated dead hiker. Uh, so they of course immediately called the authorities and the police got there and started their investigation. And it, it, inside the, oh, so the tent was a, um, I have to use my cheat sheet here because it's a lot of information, sorry. A two man uh, by Brooks Range Mountaineering tent. The model was the Fure, it was bright yellow. Of course, I'm gonna have pictures of all this uh, throughout this video and of the hiker. Um, so bear with me on some of this. Uh, he had Russell Brand gray and neon green shorts on, a Columbia baseball hat, which was very dirty, but they think it might have been white or gray. He had a blue Nalgene water bottle. Uh, black Solomon hiking boots were found outside the tent, as, as well as black trekking poles. And you can look at the pictures here. And um, a yellow sleeping bag. And here's the bizarre part. He had $3,600 in cash on him. He had a map of Florida, but no map of the Appalachian Trail. Now the hikers that were interviewed that knew him thought that he, or came to realize that he was uh, an amateur hiker. This might've been his first long-term, long through hike, because a lot of the things that he like, did, as far as not having a, um, a phone, they didn't find a phone, and um, no map of the, the full trail. And uh, they know that he had hiked a big portion of it because they found people that had met him along, all along the way. Uh, the last confirmed sighting of him was in March of 2018. So really only a few months before. And it's kind of interesting because 
They found him in July of 2018, and he only weighed 83 pounds. After their investigation, they easily determined that there was no foul play, that this was something of natural causes. He had died of starvation. But that's where it's so bizarre because he had all this money. He wasn't really out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, obviously he had experience hiking from New York. So, you know, who knows? He might've been injured. Uh, it's just really hard to say. He could have had a heart attack. They estimated his age between 35 and 60. You know, it's kind of a broad range, but if you look at the pictures, I'd say like mid forties to around 50. Uh, bluish gray eyes, a salt and pepper beard, uh, grayish hair. Um, they also noted that his teeth were in excellent condition. So, you know, dental records should be able to identify this man, but unfortunately they have nothing to match it with because no one knows this guy's real name. At all the hostels that he checked into, he used one of these aliases, whether it was Bell, Ben Billamy or Denim, uh, mostly harmless. Um, so it's one of those things where they've been trying to identify him for several years now. And the weird thing about this John Doe case is because we have tons of pictures of him. We know exactly what he looked like in real life. There's been people that knew him on trail. Um, some of the hikers that he came into contact with said that he uh, mentioned that he had an ex-girlfriend, that he had once stayed with his sister in Sarasota, Florida. So, you know, you'd think like by now, somebody would have reported him missing or something, but you never know what terms he left on. He could have said, hey, I'm gonna be gone for the next several years, you know, hiking around the country. I mean, it's just so hard to, to really say, but again, I'm hoping that with videos like this, I know a lot of us are about to start through hikes. I know the Appalachian Trail uh, people are just getting ready to, to get out there. And these are the kind of things that, you know, this kind of information passed around. Somebody might say, oh, yeah, that guy. I know that that's so and so. And hopefully we can help bring some closure to. I mean, I'm sure there's got to be someone out there looking for this guy that is missing him. But a lot of times these cases, you know, you just need that one piece. To, to bring it all to a close. And um, I think with, uh, with this case, it, it, there's a lot of positives in that we do have so many pictures and we do have so much information about his background, at least what he told people. People said that when they did meet him, he was very friendly, uh, very easygoing, but reserved. So. And it's also kind of curious that in 2018, he didn't have a phone or any type of electronic navigation equipment because that's a lot more commonplace. And we know that he started way up in New York. So uh, anyway, I just wanted to bring this, put this out there and post the pictures. And um, you know, if anybody uh, has any information or recognizes this guy and knows who he is, the information will be in the in the description of the Collier County Police Department or the authorities or who to call. Uh, along with, uh, the, throughout this video, I've been putting in um, you know, the map of where he was, um, he was found and different pictures of him and his hiking gear that uh, I've discussed. And um, so, yeah, I guess there's really not much else to say. I, I just hope we can help find out who this man was and bring some closure to his family. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night. Uh, sorry, guys. So I just wanted to um, say a few editor's notes here. Um, if anyone does have any information regarding the case, you can contact the Collier, Collier County Sheriff's Department at 239-252-9300. And again, I'm sorry if I seem sort of like monotone in this type of video, um, but I don't really know how else to, you know, be in this kind of video because it is really sad and it, it, it's it's frustrating too because, like I said, we have so much information, uh, all the pictures, and that's usually one of the hardest parts about a John Doe case. You, the body is usually found, it's decomposed. They, you know, they have to go by a, a, a sketch or rendition, so. 
Uh, please leave any comments or questions in the uh, comment section. And again, most of these videos that I'll be doing will be uh, be done outside and on trail. And I'm going to keep working on the quality. So I do appreciate you bearing with me on that. And uh, hopefully, you know, we'll be able to bring some closure to some of these families together. All right. Have a good night.